it's actually the last edition of Business Matters for the week. It's Wednesday, 26th of January, 2022. My name is Lillian Ezewa and I'm standing in for Ifi Melody, for my Jubobi, a uh, sparkling woman on radio. <music> And on business matters, we have uh, different things that we talked about, and today is not an exception. We'll be talking about something that uh, will be of interest to every well-meaning Nigerians, especially those who would love to go into um, a particular sector which we'll be focusing on uh, this morning, and that's um, the educational sector. And that's because on Monday, the 24th of January, was the International Day of Education. And if you did listen to... Um, and uh, um to viewpoint for today we actually looked at uh, um, the importance of education in everything that we do and uh, yes we're moving it on to business matters as always but today uh, business matters will be having a guest that will be looking critically on this issue we want to discuss the business of education but before then we'll start off with our quote for today and our quote for today, our business quote for today, is uh, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. And is a quote from Winston Churchill. But as always, since we have uh, a guest joining us this morning, uh, it would be good and kind enough for him to um, help us and um, explain what he understands by understands by this arc business quote for today and we have in the studio uh, Solomon Okeke. Good morning and welcome to Business Matters for today. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. It's my pleasure being back here again. Yes, it's our pleasure to having you and um, I know we're seeing for the first time in this year so Happy yes, New Year. Happy New Year and Happy New Year to our listeners. Yes, Happy New Year to everyone listening to Solid FM as well. Alright, so at this point would, uh, our quote is from Winston Churchill and um, he, he led Britain through one of the darkest period and he's somebody that a lot of people appreciate what he did you understand going with this quote success is not final failure is not fatal it is the courage to continue that counts what can you make out of this particular quote okay to me success according to uh, the quote it's not something that should enter into your head mm. and make you uh, feel on top of the world make you feel like you are better than every other person you know um i so much believe that uh, when your success enters into your head it blows your head and then your crown falls off and failure is not fatal so anybody who has failed it's not the end of the world whether it's in business in your career in your personal life whatever be the area of your life where you have failed it is not the end of the world but it's a stepping stone if we don't see failure as a stepping stone it's going to it's going to uh, be detrimental to us because once you fail and you're not looking at failure as a stepping stone you so, but courage is very important. Whether you whether you failed or you've succeeded, if there is need for you to keep stepping on and and becoming your best through courage. All right. So, um, success is not failure. I know a lot of people listening right now. I know you uh, you're moved by what he just said. So, success is not the final. It uh, shouldn't be. Is it more like success should not be the final destination for everyone? Is that what you're trying to say? No, what I'm trying to say is that success should not make you feel like you're on top of the world well, and like better than every other person. Okay, that's one. We, has, we have actually three quotes. I want us to look critically at uh, this morning so that um, everyone listening uh, would understand um, why he or she, especially those who would want to venture into one or two businesses this uh, new year, they tend to understand. The, the next one is from Richard Branson. And um, Richard Branson is someone a lot of people also respect. And he said, business opportunities are like buses. There's always another one coming. Mm. So business opportunities are like buses. There's always another one coming. So what can you make out of this as well? You know that's all. That's, that's um almost like uh, what people say that opportunities comes oh. but once. Yeah, but I I, I, I I think that's not correct. When people say opportunity comes but there once, are opportunities there are actually. opportunities actually. You may actually miss one, but there is one that is coming. And the most important thing is to have that sensitivity to see the opportunities and 
and tap into them. And of course, there are opportunities that are not meant for you. There are things you should not say yes to because they are just opportunities. So, when those ones come your way, it takes sensitivity to say, no, this is not what I should go into. And then wait for what actually you are supposed to go into. And when you see the one that you are supposed to do and you are convinced about it, there is actually no need wasting time. You just have to get into the bus and, you know, get, do, get, get things done. Okay, get into the bus and get things done. Is it more like where there is a will, there is a way, kind of? Yeah. So y you need to keep moving on. The doors are always open. It's just for you to probably the one you entered had been shut and maybe mistakenly opened by someone. Yeah. So you need to go over there and open another door in e case all the doors are closed. Exactly. All right. So finally, um, uh, we, the last quote is from Anthony Robbins, and it says, "Every problem is a gift." Mm. Without problems, we would not grow. Every problem is a gift. Without problems, we would not grow. What can you make out of this as well? A lot of people run away from problems. But problems, or maybe you can call it challenges, they are opportunities for you to grow. And if you jump over it and not go through the process, you're not going to grow. You're going to have stunted growth. Even in business, when you see challenges and then you're looking for the quick way out, you know, not to get into it and learn your lessons. And a lot of people also, problems can also come in form of mistakes. And a lot of, a lot of people are so, so much afraid of mistakes. They are running away from mistakes like they are running away from death. And when, when they run away from it, they don't have the opportunity to learn. So problems and challenges are opportunities for you to learn. And by learning, you are growing. So, so it's more like um, there, there's something I saw somewhere of uh, someone saying that uh, uh, the, the idea that one can go through life without conflict, without issues, is actually unrealistic. Exactly. So there are problems here yeah. and there. Exactly. So even those who have made it in life, in quotes, those who have actually carved the niche for themselves, mm. they had to go through uh, one or two problems before they got to their point. And even as they've gotten to their point, they still have challenges on a daily basis. Mm. So this journey is not as it easy is as... It's not a huge free one. But it also depends on your mindset. How you see things. How you see problems. People who are successful, they see problems and are, as an opportunity to grow and to make the best out of their life. But people who are failure-minded, they want to run away from it. Mm. So it's more like someone told me back then that it is these problems that we face every day that actually builds our character. And the person said not only our character, but it engages our creativity and builds um, the humility you find most people have now. It's actually these issues they've passed through over time. Yeah. When you see them, you know, say, why are you so humble? And then if they tell you their story, they say, if I tell you my story, exactly. you will not understand. Exactly. It also builds their capacity, mm. their capacity to do more. For example, you want to do, you want to make sales, and your target is hundred, and then you encounter a lot of challenges um, on your way to making hundred sales, and you were able to surmount those challenges, and you made hundred sales. You have capacity. So next time, that hundred sales becomes your milestone. Next time, when you're getting back, like, I've done hundred. Oh, let me do two hundred. Okay, because you've gone through a challenge, some challenges, and then you pass through them. All right. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Uh, we've gone through our quote, a business quote of the day. We had three. Every problem is a gift. Without problems, we would not grow. That's one. We also went with uh, Winston Churchill, who says, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that matters. I know a lot of people, business also, business opportunities are like buses. There's always another one coming. We'll just take a quick break. And when we return, it will be time for business news of the day so don't go anywhere keep it locked business matters continues my name is lillian and i have solomon solomon okay, with okay. Me. don't go anywhere Welcome back to Business Matters and uh, this is the time where we uh, discuss on what we have this morning. Today we want to look at the business of education and uh, to do justice to this, this is in regards to uh, the theme for this year's International Education Day, Day of Education, which is on uh, the 24th of January. It's every 24th of January every year and today, um, on Monday, 
was the International Day of Education and um, the theme is Changing Course, Transforming Education. Changing Course, Transforming Education. So we have uh, Solomon Chimaichi Okeke. He is a trained, he's trained to create positive impact wherever he's found and I think he has done that when we started off with the business quote. He's the co-founder of Impact Field Global Youth Initiative which is impactfield.com.ng and it's an organization that is geared towards empowering the youth in totality and has been creating and delivering value to the youth populace in Nigeria and beyond the shores of Africa. He is a leadership and management strategist, a personal development trainer and communication coach, a freelance writer and an award-winning author of seven books. He's actually a twin. Uh -huh. So yeah. let me add that. <laughs> and he's passionate about raising transformational leaders who will stand the test of time and character, capacity, courage, competence, and virtue. He started convening the annual leadership rebirth conference since 2017. Okay, yes, since 2017. And he is the co host of the Enigo Reader Summit, a literacy promotion event that has impacted over 3,000 people since 2016. He has so many uh, things accredited to him. And through his private coaching and mentoring sessions, he helps um, young people with relevant values, principles, and skills for achieving excellence and successful living and also discover their purpose develop their potential and explore the world with their God-given abilities and they'll be asking with so much things credited to him how old is this guy we'll go to that he's currently an alumnus of Destiny Leadership Academy Dominion Leadership Institute and School of Purpose and Influence New Zealand he is a 2021 fellow of the platforms young professional boat camp and is sits on the board of trustees of true love club international and raymond and rosemary foundation he's here he's been with us since we started off this program and is here to do justice to our topic this morning which i did talk about we're looking at uh, uh, the business of education and this is in relation to the unesco theme that's for the international day of education changing course transforming education good morning once again good morning uh, Solomon, and morning. welcome to business matters again thank you so much okay so uh, this morning I want to look at the business education and my first question will be what are your thoughts on education as a tool of empowerment because when a lot of people I asked a question earlier on um, I asked people yes a lot of us have been through the formal education forwards of a university yeah then the question is now you're out you're working are you actually working the work as regards to your certificate and you need to see the response no i read banking and as i speak to you i'm a businessman i read this and as i speak to you i read engineering i'm a cashier in a bank you need to see the response and mm. it, it, it tends to touch me and i'm like oh so does it mean that education is not important as we speak so let's get your thoughts okay to me um i, I have to start by you know uh uh, sharing my view of what I think education is. Um, there are so many definitions of what education is actually, but my own thoughts about education is um, the delivery or, uh, or the acquisition of knowledge and information that we in turn make uh, the recipient a better person. Now, why did I say delivery and acquisition? It's a two-way thing. There is someone who delivers those information. That means the person knows, has gotten to know about it, and and possibly mm. has applied it mm. and it works for him before he now shares it to, uh, to another person. Then there is another person who receives and that means that all of us in one way or the other we are delivering and we are receiving. Uh, so we are at, at the both ends uh, at intervals at different times. So education has to do, it's not just about you know the formal education. To me I have three types of education that I, I know which includes the education of the head, the education of the heart and the education of the hand. So these three types of education it's what makes education a holistic one and makes it um, a tool of impact and development. You know, uh, it is said that someone made a quote and he said that education is the passport to the future. And when he talks about education being the passport to the future, 
I don't think he was just talking about the formal education, which of course is very important and is very um, um, is very key if we do it well. Okay, so education to me it's um, a very important tool for uh, development, international development, personal development, and an international global transformation. Now, education was education. It's um, it's a tool that plunges people out of ignorance, and the truth is that ignorance is a very very bad disease. Like it it kills more than coronavirus. In fact, if you don't know about coronavirus, it will kill you. And it's education that brings the knowledge of coronavirus and all these things to you. So. Education is important and ignorance is the opposite of education. And when you are ignorant, you are at the you are you are in a very difficult and dangerous position. So education as a tool of development and transformation means that education provides you with knowledge. Knowledge to become a better person, knowledge to develop other people, knowledge to uh, do well in your career, knowledge to even practice what you've learned. Okay. Now, you did mention about humble education, and um, that brings me to the next question. Uh, what are your thoughts on humble education, the educational system of Nigeria? Uh, where, where, where we're coming from, actually, because I know you have to go to school. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe during that time, so that the street food, and maybe probably growing up again, they saw that uh, this thing might not be good. Yeah. So you should be able to project that forward. Yes, of course. So, what was the thing? Yeah, during the days of our fathers, education was sacrosanct. It was a very important tool, and uh, they wanted it. And it was interesting because it was just coming into um, the system, and then they loved it. You know, people were getting scholarships. People were even begged to go to school because they were so much in love with their family and all that. And uh, anyone who goes to school learns actually learns very well, and then gets scholarship. They they succeed in life and all that but um, that was that's where we were then but today the truth is that there is a degeneration of what education actually is to me I will call it a devaluation I will call it lack of value for education even and um, when I talk about lack of value I'm not talking about just the government I'm talking about different aspects of what makes up humanity and what's what's uh, mix of education and when I talk about these different aspects they include um, the individual that's the children or the students that is supposed to go to school they include the parents and the family that is supposed to train a child that loves education and, and formal education it includes the teachers in schools and the lecturers it includes the government it includes the, the religious organizations it includes uh, the non-governmental organizations now let me talk about the the, the uh, lack of value for education where it has to do with um, the children um, we run Impact View Global Youth Initiative and we have a scholarship scheme. So, so one of these scholarship schemes, uh, so one of the people, the children in the scholarship scheme, we put them in a private school, we pay for everything they need. And there's an instruction, if you need anything in school, place a call. No call. And before you know, you want to check up on them the next, the, uh, the next time, the, the school says two weeks, we've not seen these children. That's because there is a lack of value on education so, so don't you think that maybe probably they're getting um they prefer uh, how do i put it now so that they prefer rather than going to school let them also look for other means to gain knowledge rather than going to school okay. rather than make edu because education uh, a, a lot of people will say education is just school 
when yeah. it comes to other things it's not education you gain knowledge or something yeah okay to me all all of them they are different ways of being educated okay well, of course you already know we have formal and non-formal education mm. okay these children may want to um you know gain gain knowledge and be educated in other forms but the truth is that um i recommend for every young person every child to at least finish your secondary school so at least finish your secondary school, whatever it is uh, that you want to do. Have a, 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 a certificate of, you know, uh, that, that, you, that you did, you know, well in Nigeria we call it WAEC, we call it NECO. Have that. In fact, that, that, that opens some doors for you. And we can also not uh, put aside the importance of going to the higher institutions. Irrespective of the fact that some of the things we see there uh, are not what it's supposed to be, but they are also important. They, they are important because they give you exposure, they give you um, a widened scope of knowledge and learning, even in your field. Okay, uh, so finally, um, because we we're talking about education before we actually run out of time, uh, when you talk about uh, education, because when I was reading your profile, there are a lot of education, education, education inside it. So I've, I've been being on the journey of promoting education and literacy. How can one who is willing to profit, to make profit from this area, start and achieve success? Because it's something you have passion for. And there are a lot of people listening who are young, just as you are, and who want to also tow your direction. But they don't know how to go about it and also make money out of it. Because the truth is, if you have business and you're not everything is always at a loss then you need to start think have a rethink if what you're doing is actually what you're supposed to do maybe probably <coughs> there's something you're not doing right so how would one who is willing to go into this business start okay you know i i have already established the fact that it education is not just about the formal um, going to school i said that to, uh, that to me education is um delivering and acquiring knowledge that at the end will be valuable and will make the recipient a better person so um the person who is writing a book is into the education business the person who is delivering a course is into the education business even the person who um, is who sets up a tutorial is into the education business the person who opens a school is also into the education business and so many of the, the free, freelance writers are into education business because they are delivering knowledge okay now how do you go into this business number one is that you have to understand what you really want to do what do you want to do and then find your place of uniqueness there is nothing you want to do there is no aspect of education that you want to go into that people are not there already is it book that people are that people are not writing or is it what, what is it that people are not doing already F understand and have conviction of what you want to do then find your place of uniqueness because that's your penetration point and then you have to penetrate what what is your area what do you want to penetrate with all right for me i i started you know my my, my basic my brand it's all about leadership and education and everybody knows about it so we started the leadership the anyway with that summit and then the brand the visibility is coming up and then the leadership will be conference so if i put out a training tomorrow on leadership and i say you have to pay for it because it's my knowledge that i'm sharing with you you will have to pay for it of course i've written a lot of books i don't dash it to people anyhow even if you want to ask me yeah please dash me i'll ask you go to a boutique and you know uh, tell them to dash you a cloth mm. because these things are values it's just that in nigeria um our people do not put that attach value to some of them say you you have to because you you are the one that wrote the book you have to give it to us free the person that sells clothes is he not the one some of them are the ones that sew it so why wouldn't they give it to you free of charge so it's about you knowing what you want to do having a conviction then finding your penetration point and then acting on it action is very important because if you don't so act what if you have all these things well marked out the action penetration points and all that and how do you not convince people around that okay just like now you want to start with a school 
a primary school let me just go down a primary school yeah. and there are so many primary schools out there so many of them in your streets especially you have about four yeah and you meet this person and say ah, why do you want to start off a primary school when we have four but where I, do you want to put it yeah like is it like why I know that's that's why i said something about finding your unique your your piece of uniqueness mm. and that's your that's that's what tells you if these people are doing this and there are other people are, this one is doing there are four schools around there they are doing the same thing and you want to come into the same system in the same environment to do the same thing then you don't have a, you don't have a plan to succeed you must have something that people are willing to an addition an added advantage maybe all the schools in your area they don't have they don't do computer they don't even have computer lab and then you, you, you get into it and then most of primary school students you are teaching them how to operate computer and that's an added advantage and sometimes it doesn't come with an added cost why wouldn't parents take their children from here because they, some of them don't even have computer at home they don't know how it they want their children to be educated so there is a unique you have to have a unique point okay and then you act on it because if nothing moves until you move it action is very key action is very key now um, on the final note as we uh, round up the show because we have a program at 11.50 what would be your advice to everyone especially those listening to this program and those who are p they are listening but um, possibly they, they are ma market women market man out there and they have children who want to venture into this business of uh, education what would be your advice to them this morning as regards to how to how to know that education is as important as and as you eating especially as regards to the girl child because we've noticed over time that when it comes to girl education some parents up to this age up to this time still find it hard they don't like they find it very very difficult to say okay let me train my child mm. my girl child because yeah. uh, to them if i train and that man will come, we'll come my that's, <laughs> a, that's the, they say how do we change this mentality on a final note okay um i want to advise or encourage um, our mothers our fathers and even um people young people who are listening to me education is powerful and when I talk about education, I talk about all-round education. I talk about the education of the head, which is the one you go to school, the intelligence. Mm -hmm. I talk about the education of the heart, which is the inculcation of values and morals and principles. And then I talk about the education of the hand, which is the skills. All these types of education, they are important. And any of them that you want to venture into, please go in and ensure that you do it. Take action, necessary action on daily basis and you're going to see the success education is powerful and it has great evidence the truth is that what you know cannot be taken away from you even if you bought a car and the car crashes on the road and you're still alive what you know will still not be taken away from you and that's the power of education all right what you know cannot be taken away from you because of education and it could be the education of the head the, the heart, heart and the hand and the hand that skills the heart's head so it depends on you to de decide which one. S which Jesus do you want to serve? <laughs> which road do you want to follow? Do you understand? So just do the right thing. That's what we're saying. And be positive. Very, very impo important. Education is very, very important. It's very, very powerful. And uh, look around you. Those who are educated, they have. there's a way people perceive them. There's a way people see them unlike those who are not i'm not saying those who didn't go to school and just like he, we did say education have different grade exactly. so you, you can be very good and backing it up with going to school thumbs up for you so thank you so much to our guest this morning and that's uh, solomon chimaichi okk thank you so much thank uh, for you being so here. much he's the co-founder of impact field global youth initiative and that's impactfield.com.ng that's an organization that is geared towards empowering the youth in totality and he has been creating with his twin brother delivering value to the youth populace in nigeria and beyond the shores of africa so thank you so much for joining us on the last edition of business matters for the week it's my pleasure thank you so much and thank you to our listeners yes thank you so much to everyone who did listen to, uh, so sorry we were not able to take calls but we know you're watching and as well you're listening to us live on facebook solid 100.9 fm and via radio solid 100.9 fm and also you're listening to us online www.solidfmradio.com thank you so much to uh christiana right 
and thank you so much to Cynthia. Thank you so much to uh, my team and of course Ifi Melody, Ifoma Ajimobi. Thank you so much. My name is Lillian. Is the one have a wonderful and blessed day coming up at the top of the hour? It will be Angelus right after that. The second major news bulletin of the day, and that's the media news. Don't go anywhere, keep it locked on this dial.